non-essential purchases. So it's another interesting tweet from USA Today um, that had the timeline popping. I thought I'd share with you guys today. USA Today, I'll share with you guys today. Mm. So this is um, a tweet from USA Today and it says the following. The average adult in the USA spends $1,497 a month on non-essential items. I'd assume probably might be the same in the UK. All told, that's roughly $18,000 a year on things we can all do without. That's in their opinion, again, because, you know, I'm sure we can all we can all say what... We can all uh, make a uh, conclusion. We can all maybe make a conclusion on what we think is essential, right? So, here's a list of stuff. Average American spends almost $18,000 a year on non-essentials, and they count as f- follows, Right? Uh, per month restaurant and restaurant meals $200 a month right drinks $200 take out 178 um buying lunch 174 impulse purchases 109 ride shares 96 grooming 94 subscription box 94 cable 91 online shopping okay cool average family right now i would say Again, if you're just a regular dude, regular working class guy, just trying to make a good living and doing yourself, I don't think none of these are non-essential, right? They're all parts of our, uh, they're all parts of life that make, I think, life more meaningful, right? They add more value to life. I've always said to my little brothers, whenever they were working in a job that they hated, I always told them the one thing that you should be doing, especially working in a job that you don't like, is of course stick it out, right? Because obviously you need the money. Um, but for the most part, try and take, try and spend for each paycheck, you, for every time you get paid a month, right? Each time you get paid the end of the month, try and buy something nice for yourself. Whether it's a jacket, whether it's a pair of trainers, whether it's treating yourself to a night out, whether it's um, going to the cinema, whatever it may be, do something nice for yourself every time you get paid. Every time. And then what will end up happening is that over the period of time, you'll start to have something to look forward to, right? So that will make whatever you're doing have a meaning. It'll make all the shitty things that are going on day to day a bit more a bit more tolerable. You'll be able to put up with it a bit more. But when you turn up to work every single day, hating what you're doing, with no end in sight, you're just saving money for no no apparent reason, or you're not saving, you're just spending it whenever you're spending it, living life frivolously and not really f- having no regard for anything, living paycheck to paycheck, that's when life becomes a bit harder. That's when that's when that's when these non-essential items be, you know start to like hurt you. It's like oh, fucking no, I'm not earning enough because every time things are not looking well. But I think in general, for the most part, all these items are essential. I think ride shares being one of them. I think to compare sharing to to compare using an, to compare spending a hundred dollars, let's say equivalent to a hundred pound a a month on Uber, um, and ensuring that you know you're not killing your fellow um, road users by driving home drunk or inebriated or high. It's something that you can't really put value on. I'd hate to. F- I wonder if anyone can even tally up the results of or how. I wonder what the decrease is in the actual um, drunk driving offences in the UK, or just general accidents in general for people. Well, gen- accidents might have probably gone up because people are on their smartphones, Snapchatting all that shit. But but I think driving your car, but I think people that are people being caught drunk driving has probably decreased a lot since the advent of Lyft and Uber and all these kind of things. It must have. So to for somebody to spend a hundred dollars a month just to get from A to B, sometimes on emergency, sometimes because you have to commute. I think that's cool, man. And you're not buying, you're not owning your own car. You don't have to have that. And you don't have that um, thing sucking on your bank account, right? Even if you're leasing it or if you want to pay outright, again, paying outright, it's not money up front. You have to pay. Leasing it a month, again, is an exorbitant rate. You're not going to find anything decent for maybe under for under 300 pounds for the most part a month. It's probably worth it. Personal grooming, again, more than worth it. Subscription boxes, again, they're probably going to be things that you're, you are getting a lot of benefits from. Cable, you could probably, probably do without that. You could probably just get um, a Netflix account. I know I have done, done that. I don't have a, a TV in my household at all. So I just have everything on a streaming platform for the most part that I get online. Online shopping, again, I don't know what that constitutes, but if it's stuff on Amazon, then that might be just about what I spend on books alone. Because I buy about four books a month, so that might be again something that I I, I would say is an essential part of uh, my day to day. And then what else you'd say here? Restaurant meals, I I do about that completely. I don't go out to eat at all for the most part. I'm quite healthy with my eating. I make my own lunches and stuff, so that's something I save a lot of money on straight away. Uh, drinks, 
that's something I do when I go out, but I don't. I wouldn't say I spend as much as that. But let's say I do. Let's say that's honest. Takeouts and delivery, probably not as much as that either. Uh, buying lunch, I don't do that at all. And impulse purchases don't really happen. So I think for the most part, you can make a case for every single one of them. Now going back to the point previously, the Steve Harvey thing. If you're trying to make your own business, if you're trying to create your own agency, if you're trying to invest in your own startup, if you want to be an influencer, all that sort of stuff, you might have to sacrifice loads of those things and funnel that money all into your passion project. That's the difference, maybe, it comes in it. But I don't think these are non-essential items. These are, again, it dep- it, if you live in London, a ride share isn't non-essential. It's essential. If you want to get somewhere quickly and you don't have your own car, especially because most Londoners don't even have driving licenses, let alone a provisional, let alone um, have passed their theory. People have, like me, I have nothing, nothing. No driving license at all. So the fact that I would, the assumption that I would... Um, it's somehow non-essential i can cut back on ride shares like nah that's an essential part of my monthly spend mate i need to be able to call an uber for myself like it has to be like that's not that's not negotiable at all but yeah i thought that was quite ridiculous for the most part i think some of the comments have kind of said the same sort of thing again i'm not sure why they're trying to shame the american public to think oh you spend eighty thousand pounds just to live it's like yeah motherfucker that's why you need to, that's why the what you call it the medium or the average cost of employment or like you know the hourly rate needs to go needs to kind of go up a bit because this is what i'm spending right if you're the average working class dude that doesn't really care about starting their own business this is what you're going to fight for 